Few things are as disappointing as getting your publication and finding out that that picture which you thought was going to be so fantastic or that full page ad that you managed to sell is actually pixelated. So today I'm going to show you some of the things to look at before you send that PDF off to the printer. One of the most common problems that people see in InDesign is the picture looking pixelated on your page when in fact you know that you have enough resolution for the picture. That's because in order to save RAM, InDesign is just giving you an approximation of the picture. If this pixelated look is really, really bothering you and you don't have a lot of programs open so you have lots of memory, you can go up to View, Display Performance, and High Quality Display. And as you can see now in my photograph, there's no pixelization whatsoever. So now I'm looking at it in the best resolution possible. So let's go down the page and look at some of the things you should look for. I'm going to be showing you examples in InDesign 6. However, I will also point out how you can find these things in earlier InDesign versions. So here we go. In order to make sure that all of your photographs and images, or even PDFs if it's an ad, are linked properly, you should look in your links palette. If it's not showing up on your desktop, then go up to Window and choose Links. When we choose this, we can immediately see that there are some problems here. Notice that one of my images has a question mark through it, which means, and if I roll over it, it's telling me that it's missing. And if I double click on it, I can relink it. It immediately goes to the file folder that I was working in and it asks me, where is the picture? It is looking for the image that was previously called 1675, but for some reason someone went into the file and they started changing the names. If I'm not sure which one this is, I can see the thumbnail right here, and I know in that case it is this picture of the child who was looking from behind a rubbish bin. So I tell it OK, and now it goes ahead and relinks. As long as I'm on this photo, I might want to double click on it because when I do, it gives me information about the link and tells me how big the picture actually is. And it tells me that blown up at this size, the actual PPI for the photo is 180 pixels per inch. Because this is going to print in a newspaper and I know that I only need 144 pixels per inch, this is fine. If you were printing in a yearbook, though, that needed 260 or even 300 pixels per inch, you might want to resize this picture and make it smaller because you would get a little bit of pixelization or muddiness. It also tells you who took the picture, but most importantly on here, it tells you about the color space. And notice that my color space is RGB, red, green, blue, which is only good for computer monitors. Most printers, especially of uh, periodicals, newspapers, magazines, will want your pictures to be in CMYK. And if they aren't, you may have color problems or the picture may not print at all. A lot of yearbook companies now are allowing you to submit your pictures in RGB and they go ahead and make the manipulation back at the plant. So what I'm going to do is change this picture without leaving Adobe InDesign. I simply hold down control and click on the picture and I can tell it to edit with Adobe Photoshop. It comes up in here. I can go up to Image, Mode, and change it from RGB to CMYK. It's going to give me a warning. I'm going to say lovely. And notice up here now, it is going to tell me it's in CMYK. I can close that picture and save it. And then go back to InDesign, and there it is 
it's properly changed. And if I click on the picture now, it's going to tell me it's in CMYK. I'm going to click on Rubbish Bin. I see that it's in RGB. I'm going to do the same thing, come over to the picture. And I have everything locked on my page, so I can also do it this way. With the name selected, I can come up here and say Edit with Photoshop. This is what I love about Adobe products. You can always do it multiple ways. Come up to Image, Mode, and change it to CMYK. Close it, save it in the same format, and toggle back over to InDesign, and now I can see it's in CMYK. This last picture, which is the boy down here, and if I look at him, and let's actually zoom in, and you can see that he indeed is looking pixelated already. It means that I have a really big problem. This could be a picture that I had also used on a website and just took the wrong copy of the picture, or who knows what happened. But if I look at it, I can tell it's in 72 DPI and it's effectively 22 pixels per inch. That's never going to print. So I can do a couple of things. I think the best thing to do is to go to the picture and come down here to where it says relink. And if I go to my file folder, I'm going to see right here, lo and behold, I did have a schoolroom Jinja large and it's saved as a TIFF. I can open it, it's going to relink, and then this time when I look at it, I can see that my TIFF picture is in here, it's in CYMK, and my actual PPI is 180, which is going to work for my open web press, so I can rejoice and be happy. If I look down here at the bottom, and this happens in, I believe, CS5 and 6, it's telling me I still have an error on this page before I PDF it. So I'm going to go to the pre-flight panel, and it's going to tell me there's some text which is overset text. If I look at it, I can see that there is overset text on here. And if I look down here at the bottom, I can see, yes, from this red plus, I am missing part of my caption or cut line, so I can go through and adjust that then. There's one other best practice that my newspaper staff does when we are putting pages together before we make a PDF. We want to make sure that all the pictures and all the text that go to this page are actually all together in one file folder. And so in order to do that, we go up to File, Package. And on this, it's going to tell us that we are using seven fonts, that all of our pictures are found, that zero use RGB. I'm using four process ink and no spot colors because this is a color page. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it to package the page. It's going to ask to save it one more time. And I can make a file folder, and I might actually call this finished page, or I might call it page one packaging, or something that I can remember it by. Save it to my desktop, package it. It's going to remind me don't to steal fonts, and I'm going to put everything in that package. So after I've packaged my folder, I can go to my desktop, and in there, I can navigate to my file folder and see the, any fonts which I used on the page, any instructions which, which I may have given to the printer, my photographs, and my page. So from here I'm ready to make my PDF. I can go up to File, tell it to Export. I can call this Page 1, and our convention is 01, and then put the date of publication or whatever it's going to be. We'll save it in the same file folder, our Packaging Problems file folder. I'm going to save it for print. Follow all the specifications according to your printer. I did get the overset problems right there because I didn't fix this. And then I can go back to that file folder I have my page, 
and I know I'm not going to have any pixelated pictures. 